man, I like this way better than losing to Kentucky. Yeah, Malik Hall over Seton Hall, baby. Let me see. This looks to be out of whack. I don't know if they can see me. Da, da, da. Let me see. Let me see how this looks because I don't know that I'm being viewed. If you guys are there, can you see me? Just because my camera on my end is not, not working the way I thought it would. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Let me know. But if if you can, and my camera on my laptop is just tripping, then basically, you know, what we had is one another Michigan State game that ended probably later than a lot of people would like to go to work. But if you're up with me, that just means either you're a degenerate or you have a night job. Either way, I'm I'm happy that you guys are here. And as far as the Michigan State game goes, it's a game that I thought they would actually win pretty easily, given, you know, all that happened with uh, Cassius Winston and his brother. I thought they'd really rally around that. But they had another tough shooting night. But, man, I mean, some of the some of the role players just stepped up huge, namely, of course, Malik Hall came in 7 for 7, 3 of 3 from 3, um, 17 points, 5 rebounds off the bench, freshman, the uh, obviously, you know, it's the best player on the court that we had tonight. Um, you know, Cassius Winston had a had a pretty good game, except you, you want that shot to fall more, specifically his floaters. He was getting it done from three, four of eight from, uh, from three-point range, but only two of nine from everywhere else. And then he obviously had the two uh, missed free throws at the end. Which was not, uh, which is not uh, ideal, right? Obviously, it didn't cost them. I'd say a pretty big shout out too to the referees at the end. You know, typically, it's it obviously de it depends on which way you go, but you know, you like to you like it when they let the teams play. I thought Malik Hall got fouled on his shot that ended up putting the Spartans up seventy three or seventy four to seventy three. Um, I thought he got fouled there. And they didn't call it. And then the next two trips down, you know, you can make the case that uh, Seton Hall got fouled on both of those plays, which would have given them an opportunity to shoot two free throws and lead the game. And the refs swallowed their whistles both times. Michigan State was obviously able to recover. The first time Cash has missed the free throw, and then he got the free throws at the end. But, I mean, it was just a huge – it's kind of as big of a game as, you know, you can have early in the season, much like the Kentucky game was this game it probably doesn't mean a whole lot moving forward except you can take away some of uh, i think it's going to help them in march with the experience with the teams that they have to go against and seen hall is certainly a team that's going to be in the dance that uh, michigan state might end up running into again and then just as far as you know obviously individual performances it's it's a game that shows you that you can trust malik hall it even shows you uh, you know, Foster Lawyer had um, – he only had five points, but he got those five points in in like a small spurt. So, you know, those are guys that hopefully you can count on to give you bigger minutes just as you move throughout the season. Um, you know, Foster came in, he had, the, he had the three in the corner, like the kind of double pump up and under three, which is really sweet. And then he had a, a steal and a bucket, which probably could have been a and one as well. No one says huge road win. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing that you can credit Michigan State for is, and it's, you know, obviously become a staple under Tom Izzo's teams, but toughness, right? You went on the road to Seton Hall, not an easy place to play, regardless of how good the team is. And this version of Seton Hall just happens to be, you know, one of the best Seton Hall teams that we've seen in, in quite a while. And Michigan State was able to go into Seton Hall's house uh, you know, whether the storm of a 37 point game from uh, from Miles Powell, uh, the Seton Hall, um, the Seton Hall guard, who's he played tremendous tonight. But Michigan State was able to, you know, take that superstar performance, um, take it on the chin and then still come out with a victory. You know, much like they were kind of unable to do the first game against Kentucky when um, when Tyrese Maxey just went uh, went bananas on him. And, you know, obviously the opposite result happened. But, you know, this game, it, I think it spoke a lot to Michigan State's toughness. And obviously, again, them kind of rallying around Cassius and just rallying around as a community who had, uh, had of course, lost somebody that was, that was close to them and important to them. And then, you know, you got, uh, again, big contributions from uh, kind of a lot of the guys who you wouldn't normally expect it. 
with uh, Xavier Tillman having a really rough game. Um, he had 11 rebounds. And he played some pretty nice defense, but super rough on the offensive end. Um, one and nine, you know, he only shot two free throws, but he missed one of those. So you had some guys like Aaron Henry step up, who he only had nine points, but he played excellent defense as well. Uh, you know, even a guy like um, Rocket Watts, who he he missed the layup at the end when it seemed like Michigan State was in danger. If you looked at their win probability at that point, it was probably super low. They were down five, and then he went and he uh, he missed the layup. And then the very next possession, he came down and he nailed the three. So that's really what I'm looking for in this game is, uh, you know, it's kind of their the, the mentality of the freshman. So Rocket Watts is a guy who – we kind of can see already early on, at least he's not going to struggle with confidence, even if his shot isn't falling, even if he's still trying to adjust to like the speed and size of just, you know, division one defense. Um, he's, you know, he's a guy that's going to get his shots off. And if he, if he has a shot that he likes, he's going to take it and he's going to attack. And then you know, so we saw the same thing with uh, Malik Hall tonight who had, all the shots fall, except the except the two free throws again, where it kind of looked like the Spartans uh, may might have been a little bit in danger, and that's one thing that from this game, you know, if you want to clean it up, that's obviously it. They shot better from three. It seemed like they shot way better from fruit, um, three in the uh, in the second half, and you know there were uh, a couple different times where you could where you might have even thought that Seton Hall they they shot about the same from three. So Seton Hall from three was 11 to 28, and Michigan State was 12 to 27. So very similar there. But the difficulty of the shots that Seton Hall was hitting, you know, it seemed like those threes were more backbreaker threes. You know, back when the Warriors were good, uh, you know, it's the kind of threes that like a Steph Curry or Clay Thompson would hit, where you know, hey, it's no way, there's no way that's going in. Um, you know, you kind of thought that on the uh, on the Miles Powell four point play, there, um, you know, near the end of uh, near the end of the game. He hits that, and I think at that point they're already up one. He hits the four-point play, and then just like there's no – like there's – not that there's no way Michigan State is going to win, but that felt like an absolute killer and just like a shot, uh, you know, like a shot in the in the chest to Michigan State's chance of winning. Uh, and then obviously the Spartans were able to, to battle back and rebound from that. So obviously the most impressive thing was the toughness. You want to get better from the line. They only shot 10 of 17. Cassius missed two huge free throws at the end, which, again, could have given uh, Seton Hall a chance to really win the game. Um, Malik Hall missed a couple of free throws near the end as well. I, th I think they were already down, or they may have only been um, up one or tied, somewhere around there. It was, it was just real tight at the end. So you hope that you can tighten that chip up. But, you know, you don't expect Cassius Winston to be missing the, those free throws either. And, uh, you know, you do have guys who are really good free throw shooters on this team. And then obviously, you know, Xavier, Xavier Tillman's probably never going to play uh, that bad of an offensive game again again in his life. But let's get to some of the uh, questions you guys have been asking because I've kind of been rambling for a minute. I apologize about that. It's just the, the game got my heart rate up. And I uh, I did lose a bet on the spread. Of course, it's, it's not a money bet because – Sports gambling is illegal in Michigan. Just a, a friendly wager of, of bragging rights. Nolan, huge road win. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit. Hello, Adidas. Uh, Jim Wells, we should beat Texas and Marquette, but no, we didn't. Um, Philip Norris has felt like March. State found some added depth in Malik Hill or Malik Hall, excuse me. Yeah, again, Hall, Hall was huge tonight. And tonight did have a uh, had the feel of a March game. And the cool, the, it probably had the feel of a March game because it wasn't on a neutral site, right? You know, it was a very hostile crowd for Michigan State, which added, you know, more pressure on them. If it's a neutral site game, obviously there's no way to telling how it goes. But Michigan State probably wins by, you know, a way more comfortable margin than they were able to win. Because um, when, you know, Seton Hall was hitting those, uh, hitting some of those real tough three-pointers that were hitting, and as, you know, Powell was getting it going, Obviously, at your home arena, you are getting just the the biggest boost of energy you can. And, you know, that was a guy that was a game time decision. He had a sprained ankle coming into today. And, you know, he, he started off a little bit shaky and then probably about halfway through the first half, uh, maybe a little bit past halfway. He was able to get it going. And, you know, the crowd kind of gave him just that adrenaline boost. You know, I'm sure most of you guys are Detroit sports fans. You know, I, you know, kind of. 
uh, uh, analogous it. I'm trying to say a word. I don't want to. I don't want to pr- mispronounce it. But you know, you can kind of make in like an analogy to, uh, you know, to what Isaiah Thomas did in the playoffs when he was on a bum ankle in um, in Game Six, where it just looked like the guy was kind of not being able to be stopped. Now, obviously, Isaiah was hobbling around. It wasn't that severe, but just in terms of like the injury and it, you know, really not phasing somebody, uh, and then being able to play off of what the crowd was, uh, what the crowd was giving them. State of Michigan sports says the flash isn't there for the Spartans. Very, very good team, but beatable in the tournament format. I mean, everyone's beatable in the tournament format because it's one and done. And all the teams there are pretty good. And if you're, you know, one seed, you should make it past the first two rounds. No problem. And last year being the exception, Michigan state recently has had a trouble even doing that and just getting to the second weekend. But, you know, once you get to, like, the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, even the Final Four, you know, you're playing, like, top 20 teams pretty much every game um, at a neutral site location in a one-and-done format. So I'd say everyone is beatable in a tournament format, but we also have to keep in mind that this isn't even Michigan State's full team. You know, they still have Josh Lankford, who should be making a comeback some point in the season, and we still don't know uh, the status of uh, Joey Hauser who would be, you know, another really nice depth addition for this um, for this Michigan State offense. And if they're able to get those two guys back, you know, those two guys have you know, a lot of experience as well. So you already have this experience roster, and then maybe you can ease uh, Rocket into, into the game plan a little bit more and, you know, kind of let him be a, a bigger spark plug off the bench for you. And then, you know, same with a guy like Malik Hall. You know, those are two, obviously, your big freshmen. And then you just hope that those guys can continue to progress. And right now you're kind of throwing – I'm really rocket especially because he's uh, been in the starting lineup. But you're, you know, kind of throwing those guys to – throwing those guys to the Wolves in the sense. And, you know, it's not like you're playing a schedule where you're playing, you know, UMass or – uh, Appalachian State the first couple of games. You know, they're going up against teams like Kentucky, teams like Seton Hall. I know they have – and not that Duke's uh, quote-unquote like early season game because I think we still have like a month to go for it. But, you know, you're playing Duke in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. They have one of the tournaments coming up where they have the possibility of facing like Kansas in the um, in the final. So you you have um, you you obviously have a schedule. It's very Michigan State time as a schedule where if you want to be able to kind of ease the freshman in, that's not uh, it's, it's not the place really for that. Jim Wells said Michigan State is going to be tough this year. Not looking forward to playing them. Uh, it looks like he is a Purdue fan with his Purdue logo there. Yeah, I mean if I was an opposing fan, I wouldn't look forward to playing Michigan State. Either, you know, they're, they've gotten all the preseason hype and, you know, rightfully so because Cassius Winston's still great. And even though he hasn't played spectacularly, uh, in the two games that really Michigan State had a chance to lose, the Kentucky and the Seton Hall game, you still saw, uh, you still saw his leadership and you saw him, you know, make an, enough buckets for the Spartans. You want those percentages to rise. But, you know, Cassius isn't somebody that I'm worried about moving forward because he's going to put it together and you can just see the the way the team rallies around him. And he's still, of course, not afraid to take and make the big shot like we saw with that three tonight. Phil, love watching Tom Izzo coach. Me too. Tom Izzo is the, the man. Phil also added, it should be a great year. College basketball, so many great teams. Yeah, there are a couple of really good teams in college basketball. It feels like that uh, – I mean, even if it doesn't feel like that every preseason, just throughout the year, there's a couple teams that, you know, you start to see and you poke like, oh, my God, those guys are you know, those guys are way better than I thought. Um, on our last Sports Carnage podcast, which actually just dropped today, you guys can follow the uh, can follow the link in the description here. Um, we talked about some of the teams that were ranked um, kind of outside the the consensus, like top four or five, that uh, we thought, you know, could could make a run and could be there at the end and not necessarily surprise teams because there are teams that are on the radar, but maybe a little bit farther down. So to kind of give you guys a, a sneak peek of who I chose, I picked Ohio State as a team that I think can make a lot more noise than they're expected to this year. I like the returning players that they had coming back. And, you know, you just saw them put the absolute hammer down on Villanova, who was a top 10 team at the time. I, you know, they're probably not going to be a top 10 team 
by the time um, the Monday roll is that when they do their new rankings? By the time like Monday rolls around or whenever uh, the AP puts out the new college basketball rankings. But um, yeah, when we talked a little bit about the college basketball season um, on the Sports Carnage podcast that dropped today. So go listen to that if you haven't already. Uh, it, to, to me, it's definitely one of our better ones. But anytime that we have a chance to talk basketball, I am all for it. And then, of course, for, you know, for like our Lions fans, uh, we talked about the, the Lions, too, and kind of the, the dumpster fire that's been uh, the Matt Quinn, Matt Quinn, the Matt Patricia and, uh, and Bob Quinn era. Mason says the Spartans are dangerously undersized. They, uh, they're, I mean, they're, they're obviously smaller than um, than what Seton Hall had out there. I don't remember the gentleman's name. Was it Romeo Gill? Romeo seems Romaro. There it is. So Romaro Gill, you know, 7'2", 255. He's actually 25 years old. And I saw on Twitter he's 10 months younger than Andre Drummond, who's in his eighth NBA season right now. Um, and I think that was I – w- I want to give proper credit. I think it was Will Hunter on Twitter. Um, him or, like, Peach at the Breslin – uh, what, one of those two Twitter accounts. But, you know, we don't have anybody that's a, just a full-size grown man like that. But Joey Hauser could help us in that regard. And they know Josh Langford is big and long for his position. Was you thinking about a big word, John? No, I was trying to say, uh, I was trying to say like analogous, but I, I didn't know if that was the correct um, term for, or the correct, like, um, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. So it was analogous, but I wanted to make sure that was like the correct form of the word. You know, when you say like drank instead of drink, I was making sure that I was able to put the right uh, the right phrasing of it out. And I, I still don't know if I did, but, you know, you guys you guys understand what I meant. And if you don't, analogous is, is what I was trying to say, talking about, uh, you know, Isaiah Thomas's bum ankle to Miles Powell's. Mason Bumpus thought Langford was out indefinitely. He is, but, you know, being that it's indefinitely, that also means that he can come back at any time. <laughs> They're just not sure when that's going to be. It would be it'd be a big shock to me if he's out until March or if he's out um, for the rest of the way. But, you know, March is in four months, so that'd be like a 16-week injury. I don't think it's that severe. If it is that severe, I feel like we would have heard it by now. Um, but I do expect – Langford to come back at at some point and you know we'll be able to see hopefully this Michigan State team at full capacity State of Michigan sports does not expect to see a healthy Langford John Paul says go blue you already making excuses what what excuses did we make nobody's thinking about Michigan basketball right now got the big win over over Creighton though John Mosley do you know what happened to Davis that played for state drafted by men is Deontay Davis. So he was he was in the rotation ish for a while. Uh, I think he's probably in like the G League now. Let me go ahead and take a look before being moved by the Memphis Grizzlies. Pro career, yeah. Right now he's uh he's in the Santa Cruz Warriors, which is uh Golden State's G League team. But he uh, he's a guy who you know shouldn't have came out when he did. I think he could have used the extra year in school, and I think everybody you know, kind of thought that as well, but he wanted to go get paid. And I don't ever think, um, you know, I don't, I don't ever think that's obviously wrong for a player. Jim Wells, NCAA dropped the suspension, I think, to John Mosley. State. Oh, no. Uh, John was talking about Deontay Davis. He wasn't talking about um, James Wiseman, who plays for Memphis and is now suspended indefinitely. I would have liked to see more Bingham tonight. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Bingham believer. I love I love the length that he has. You know, somebody um, up there may have even been you, Mason, who said, uh, yep, Michigan State's undersized. And Bingham, Bingham's a guy that I do expect to uh, break out at some point this year. You know, I just love what he's able to bring with us. Don't think Lambert is coming back this year, last I heard. I haven't seen that report yet. I just hope all of you guys are lying to me about Josh Langford not coming back. Philip North, can you ever remember Tom Izzo having a big man, most 6'8 to 6'10? He likes smaller bigs. Uh, they had, so they had the, um, what was his name? Anthony Iani, maybe? For, and I mean, he was basically just like a bench player. Um, but Deontay Davis was at least long. And I know Jaron Jackson's, you know, his, his height's only like 6'9, but, you know, he's a dude with a very long wingspan as well. So as opposed to a traditional big, you know, like you see, um, 
or not traditional big, but even just traditional size, like you see Michigan have with like John Teske, who's seven two, or the um, the guy they're recruiting, Hunter Dickinson, um, who's you know seven two as well. Yeah, that's not somebody that uh, that Tom Izzo is usually. Uh, I don't know if he's just not looking at those guys, uh, but you know, not he's not pulling them, um, and then certainly you know if he does get them, he's not he's not playing them. Any thoughts on the football matchup on Saturday? So we uh, we gave our thoughts on Saturday's matchup on the Sports Carnage podcast as well. Uh, you know, we gave our picks, the predictions for the um, for the spread. So if you guys do want to hear about rivalry week, I'm actually excited because I don't know if you guys have uh, Fox. Well, if you if you watch this game, you have Fox Sports One. So it's a stupid thing for me to say, but if you have Fox Sports One, they had that. Um, United we or divided we stand special, which kind of details the Michigan Michigan State rivalry. It's actually it's actually on right now, but I do have it recorded. So after I hop off here, I'm gonna go ahead and rewind it, watch it from the beginning. But there's um there's not a lot of juice for the matchup this Saturday. I don't think, at least not from a Michigan State side. I haven't heard any of my Spartans fans talking trash, and I don't expect us to be very good. Um I don't expect the game to to have a favorable outcome for Michigan State, so I haven't really been talking any trash to my Michigan friends either, as much as I would like to. Who's my favorite MSU player not named Magic? I love Draymond, but that's kind of like an easy answer. Two of the guys that I loved only because they came um, at a time, Hades, they, uh, they came at a time when I was growing up and watching Michigan State basketball. I liked Raymar Morgan a lot, uh, and I also liked – I like Delvon Rowe because he followed me on – on Twitter, um, but Raymar Morgan, and then I was a really big fan of Mo Ager too, who's on those uh, those Shannon Brown teams. But I mean, other than that, you know, the obvious guys: Draymond, Denzel, um, Adrian Payne. But yeah, Ray, Raymar and um, and Mo Ager were like my two very first favorite Spartans when I first started watching. Good one tonight. Either way, long way, but go green and don't sign. <laughs> don't sign Kaepernick. Uh, this is 11 teams at this workout, right? Or at least 11 teams sending representatives. Do you ever do guest spots on the podcast? On other podcasts, I did I did once on um, Shea Brophy's podcast, and he works. It really works. He, uh, he's written for Detroit Sports Nation a little bit. But other than that, I mean, we just kind of started the podcast. So we're just getting our name out there. But if you guys have any podcasts that you would like me to be guesting on, let them know. Let me know. I'd love to do. Uh, I love to do. You know, really anything, um, and just talk to people who love who love sports. You know, Michigan or Michigan or other, which is one of the great things about the Sports Carnage podcast is for you know the our local Detroit sports fan base. We do a ton of local stuff, and then for you guys that like you know kind of the national broader picture because everyone has their um, you know preferences for sports, right? Whether you like football, uh, baseball, hockey. You know, typically, um, at least one of your allegiances will fall in just a sport in general. So if you're a big hockey fan, even on nights where, like, the Red Wings aren't playing, you know, you might still go catch the Blues and the Predators or something like that. And I'm that way with football, and I'm that way with um, with basketball, both college and professional for both sports. I'm a big fan of those. Um, but, you know, we have, we have fans because there's four of us. So there's kind of a fan base in every allegiance. If they're in every league, if that makes sense, state of Michigan sports would love to have you on. Absolutely. Uh, slide into our DMS on Twitter, go on Twitter and search sports carnage. Um, and yeah, DM us. Cause I run our Twitter account too. So do do that and we can, uh, we can get in touch, but yeah, I'd love to come on your, um, your pod, your website, you know, just kind of whatever you guys are doing over there. Touchdown Browns now 21 to seven. Uh, yeah, so we, we kind of got off topic a little bit here, but I enjoy chatting with you guys. That's really what we had for Michigan State tonight. Great win. Go green, go white. Obviously, condolences to the Winston family, the UAD community, uh, everybody who's kind of involved or who had a, uh, a personal relationship with, um, with Zach Reeves. Obviously, Cash is his brother over there. Uh, and, I mean, other than that, go green, go, go white, um, you know, come back next time the Pistons play. I'm not sure when that is, but, you know, we try to do something like this after the Pistons play, after the Red Wings play. Uh, not after the Red Wings. That was a complete lie. I don't know why I said that. They just saw my head. Um, after the Pistons play, after the uh, after the Lions, Michigan, Michigan State, um, we should definitely have one 
this Saturday there. Um, I think I'm supposed to do something else this Saturday, but I'm going to try and position my timing to where I can do uh, our live video first and hopefully the cat gave up your girlfriend. No, my uh, she's sleeping and my cat is uh, out here with me so he doesn't mess up our Christmas tree. And yeah, we do have our Christmas tree up already. We put it up the uh, the other day. But yeah, he's a uh, he's he's a big fan of messing it up, so he has to be out here with with me to to do a little bit of damage control. But that's what we have for you guys tonight. Stay safe. If you're working tomorrow, I hope I didn't keep you up too late. Get some rest. If you're not working tomorrow, I hope you get paid tomorrow, and then you just have this awesome paid day off, or. Yeah, you have this awesome payday, which you also have off, so then you can do 100 million other things and blow your paycheck. We play the Hornets on Friday. Thank you, Jim. I should be able to try this tomorrow. So I should be able to hop on here. Hopefully the Pistons don't keep uh, don't keep depressing me. But that's what we have for you guys tonight. Again, go ahead and check out that Sports Carnage podcast. Link in the description. We're on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, and then a bunch of other podcast sites that I'm not even familiar with. You know, do a fun experiment that I did the other day, type in Sports Carnage Podcast in Google, and then see all the hundred different places it takes you. But make sure you do it on Podbean because that's where that's one we can actually track our uh, track our viewers and track our listenership. So we can see that you guys are listening to it and liking it. And then obviously just describe, subscribe, uh, rate, review, comment, like it, share it with your friends, everything else. But that is that is for real goodbye this time as my cat puts his butt in my face. See you later. See you, Adidas. Uh, and we will see you guys tomorrow night after the Pistons game. Have a good one.